Hello, this is on how to write the LEQ for the AP World History exam. This is not easy to do and it's not easy to teach, but that's what this video is going to be about, okay? Now, make sure that if you're a student that you're watching this on a computer and not on your phone. Stop the video now and watch this on a computer because I'm going to be showing you some stuff with some really small font. Also, um, learn how to screenshot on your computer. Do that because that could that can help you and it can give you some control over. I mean, you you should be able to rewind and fast forward and everything, but just be ready to do that. All right. So let me show you what the FRQ looks like on on the AP world just to give you an overview so so this is what it looks like and you'll it'll be you'll get a booklet and this is section one part part B by the way you'll have your multiple choice that's section one part a okay that's you know 55 questions 55 minutes something like that then these are your SAQs okay and you have you got to read the questions. Be careful. Answer one and two, and then you get to choose between three and four. So you have to do one and two. Okay. So there's one. There's two. Okay. I'm not here to talk to you about the SAQ. I'm just trying to give you an idea on what to expect. Okay. All right. And then um, you can choose between three and four. These are SAQs. Okay, and they're going to be challenging, but at least you could choose between three and four. But we're not talking about the SAQ today. Okay, so then you'll take a 10 minute break. At the end of section one, you'll take a 10 minute break. Then you'll come back. And what you're going to do isn't easy. Make sure you're, you get enough sleep and enough caffeine or whatever works for you. Section two is an hour and 40 minutes. You'll do your DBQ and you'll do your LEQ, okay? This is a big deal, okay? So, um, so this is your DBQ. This video is not about your DBQ, okay? I'm going slow enough to maybe you can uh, hit pause and take a look at that, but I don't wanna talk about this in this video, okay? maybe another video. I want to talk to you about the LEQ. All right, so here we go. The LEQ. Now, here's the deal. You get to choose between three questions. Question two, three, or four. Okay, and what you'll do is you'll end up bubbling at the top which question you're doing. So make sure you get that right. Now, here they give you um, basically a, a rubric but honestly, your teacher or Heimler will do a better job at explaining this. But there, um, I think Heimler and I will do a better job at explaining this, okay? So let's take a look. These are your three choices. Question two, question three, question four. Okay, so hit pause uh, so you can read those. So now, what you need to do here is, it's pretty high level thinking. Remember, this is for college credit. So naturally, they're gonna ask you to do things that are not typical of high school history classes. This is something that's a lot harder, okay? I don't want you to feel intimidated. I just want you to know that this isn't easy, all right? So read the three prompts, and but and what you need to do is you need to fit, pick which one of these you want to write about. That's going to depend on you. It's going to depend on what your teacher taught you. It's going to just depend on, on whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay. Um, I'm fairly comfortable with all three of them, but I'll tell you which one I chose. So number two, and by the way, write on the booklet. And that's what I'm gonna do right now, okay? So number two, develop an argument. I read the whole thing, but develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which one pre-Columbian state 
in the Americas was successful in consolidating and centralizing its authority during this period. All right, so you take a minute and you think about it. What do you mean by pre-Columbian state? And if you don't know what that means pre-Columbian, then you just need to move on to another one. That means pre-Columbus, uh, pre-1492. And you could do the um, you could do the Maya, but honestly, um, yeah, yeah, because it says before around 1500. Um, I would do the Aztec or the Maya if you were going to write this. Now, we're not going to write it today because I didn't choose this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write on it. Okay, okay, so maybe um, the first, like, <sighs> okay, so you're trying to choose which one of these to write about. So if I were going to write on the pre-Columbian, I'm thinking I'm thinking Aztecs, okay? Only because that's just what I think, either that or the Maya. And how did they consolidate their power um, and their authority? This So this is political. So I'm thinking the tribute system. I'm thinking maybe the use of architecture you know, to show their dominance. Um, and and uh, maybe um, their, their strong military. I don't, I can't think of anything specific about that. So therefore, I choose not to write about essay number two. All right, so now moving on, I'm gonna skip three and then move on to essay four. Um, so we're talking late 20th century, think like post-World War II, like 1950s, you know, Cold War, or even after the Cold War. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which the spread of free market ideas led to economic change during this period. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I know about it, but I know that in Russia, you had Gorbachev, and maybe, you know, I, I'm not going to spell it right there, Gorbachev and his free market ideas. And then you've got Vietnam after the Vietnam War becoming um, more free market. Even China became more free market. You know, like even, you know, every electronic you have might have been manufactured in China. OK, so I kind of know about that, but I don't know exactly what to write. So I'm going to go with. Hope I'm going to go with number three. Okay, so so number three. Okay, I already looked at this. So I already know which one I want to play. But you would have to make a choice based on what could you write about. Okay, and this isn't easy because they don't. It's not like a DBQ where they give you documents to jog your memory. This you got to know it. Okay, and that's why your world history teacher taught you so much and maybe didn't focus on memorizing, 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 you know, and it's not easy to teach this class, but that's how it is. You kind of just got to know this stuff, but not sit around and just memorize names and stuff, okay? So look at number three. Um, develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which military conflict or military conquest was the main cause of religious change in this period, okay? So this is a causation essay. Actually, I think all of, all right, religious change. All right, so now, okay, so this is where you start brainstorming, and this might take you some time. You need to sit there and write some stuff down briefly, like I'm writing on this too, and you need to think about what were religious changes in this time period. Okay. I had a student who thought um, like conversion to Buddhism. And I said, that's great. 
but that would have been a, maybe a thousand years before this. Yeah, but it's still a good answer. He, I mean, he was still thinking out loud. I mean, you do what you can, okay? But you got to stick to this time period, okay? And here's the hard part, because anything I say gives you, you know, denies you the opportunity to think about it yourself. But if you can think of two religious changes that were caused by military conflict, then I think you've got the start of a good, basically an argument. Now, can you think of some religious changes that weren't caused by military conflict? That's good, too. You need to write them down. Okay, so hit pause and think about this, because every if you don't hit pause, then I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to write about, and then it's going to take away your creativity. Okay, so hit pause. All right, so I thought, what were the religious changes? Okay, the first thing that popped in my mind was the Spanish conquest of the Americas you know, North and South America, okay, the Americas, or you could say the Western Hemisphere, or you could say the New World, okay, or you could say all three, to, just to give it some variety in your writing. That is an example that of military conflict leading, or military conquest causing religious change, okay? So now you got to think of some other um, changes in religion. So look at the time period, 1450 to 1750. What's another major religious change? Well, there's the Reformation. That should be capitalized. Okay, Reformation. Um, so in Germany in the 1500s, the Martin Luther... Uh, complained about the Catholic Church, and he started a movement to where Europe will change Christianity forever, and then millions will become Protestants, and then uh, millions will remain Catholic. Now, is this is this caused by military conquest? Is it caused by military conquest? The answer is no, it's not. So this could be your counter-argument, okay? So let's say this is all you can think of, okay? Let's just say this is all you can think of. Well, then this is all you can think of, then this is all you got, okay? So then you'd write your, your, you'd write your other stuff, you'd give me a paragraph on the Spanish conquest of the Americas and describe as much of it as you can. Try to use vocabulary terms. Don't Stick with how military conquest caused religious change, okay? Don't get into anything else, really. And then what you can do is in a separate paragraph, you can do a counter-argument. Say, while conquest led to many religious changes, some religious change was not caused by military conquest. That would be, that would be your counter-argument, okay? That you could do it that way. That would be good. And that shows complex thinking. And you want that because that's a point. Okay. Now, I did think of a couple of others. Um, but this is just the process that I suggest you use to think about what are you going to write. Okay. And this isn't easy, but you need to move fast and, you know, and you need to be, be ready to do this. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so here's the prompt again, if you want to take a picture of that, because you need to keep going back to the prompt to read it. Okay. All right, moving right along. Take a picture of that if you want, or screenshot or something, or you can just rewind back. Okay, so... You're going to start with what's called contextualization. Now, contextualization is kind of like 
a movie trailer where you're trying to figure out the context, like what is the story about? What is going on? It's kind of like a if have you ever seen a meme about a show or a movie that you haven't seen and you're out of the loop and then somebody goes, oh, well, this is a reference to the second season of The Office or some show. OK, so then you have context and then you get it. Make sure that these two or three sentences go back to the prompt. So what is the prompt? Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which military conquest was the main cause of religious change. So your contextualization needs to be about mili uh, military, you, know, you need to talk about like what is going on in this time period that has to do with, with uh, religious change. Make sure you are talking about what caused religious change. So hit pause if you want to write this yourself. Um, but this is what I have. I think it would score. I feel pretty good about it. It does talk about religious change, and it does talk about this time period. I'm just kind of giving you an intro here. Okay, so hopefully this will score the point, and then I need to move on to the thesis statement. Okay, so your thesis statement, you don't need to write it now. You could skip about four or five lines, depending on the size of your handwriting, and then move on to the body of the essay. But your thesis statement is going to be something like military conquest was a major cause of religious change from 1450 to 1750. Or you might say military conquest was not a major cause. Okay, now that's not good enough, but that's the start. That's when you make your argument. Okay, so a thesis statement, you need to state which side of the argument you're on. Military conquest was a major cause or was not a major cause, and you're going to write one of those. Then you're going to list the topics that you're going to talk about. Okay, so here's an idea. Don't write your thesis yet. Skip about four lines, depending on the size of your handwriting. Uh, save enough room for about two sentences. Okay, so I'll come back to this in a second. So then, boom, I start writing my first argument. Religion changed as a result of conquest in the Americas. That's just a topic sentence. And then uh, I'm just giving a little bit of you know context. Um, starting around the year 1500, Spain conquered most of the Western Hemisphere while Portugal took Brazil. Both countries spread their Catholicism by force in most cases. Okay, so that's just me giving a little bit of specific evidence. I don't know if that's specific enough, but I think it is. Many temples were destroyed in the Incan and Aztecs and replaced by a cathedral. The Spanish used their superior guns and steel weapons to push their religious beliefs on these people. All right, now that might be good enough. What I'm going to do is put one more sentence in there to make sure, because at this point the reader's like, okay, so what? Well, I'm going to say it, and it might be a bit obvious, but I'm going to say the blue sentence. Catholicism will be the dominant religion in years to come, comma, a change from their old religion. OK, so that's when I just slap the reader in the face and say, all of this stuff is important because and then I say it at the end. And um, so there, there's my argument. Now, that may be all you got, you know, um, and if that's the case, then maybe you could put maybe make an, a counter argument in your next one. But what if you have another piece of evidence? I hope you do. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but if you do, then skip a couple of lines and then make your second argument. 
Okay. How, what are some other religious changes that were made because of military conquest? Well, and then I thought of the Islamic the spread of Islam. Now, not all Islam spread because of military conquest, but some of it did. I was thinking of the gunpowder empires, okay? So then I, um, so this is what I, I came up with. I don't know if it's specific enough, but I think it is. Although the Islamic world used war and conquest, okay, that doesn't, that I need to fix that. The Islamic the Islamic world used war and conquest, and that led to a change in religion. I really messed up that first sentence. Okay. And then I, then I backed it up. As the Ottomans, an Islamic empire, conquered Constantinople in the mid-1400s, this war will lead to the spread of Islam in formerly Christian areas of Southeast Europe. So here's the deal. I knew it was the year 1453, but I, I wanted you to I'd see, well, what if you didn't know it was 1453? It's okay. You just give an estimate. It's not the end of the world. This will lead to the spread of Islam in formerly Christian areas of Southeastern Europe, you know, like uh, Serbia, Bosnia, you know, places that are north of Greece. Okay. The, the famous cathedral in Constantinople will be converted into a mosque after the conquest. Now, I should have said the Hagia Sophia, and I actually had to Google it, but I wanted you to see that this isn't perfect. I just did the best that I could. But if I could say what the name of that cathedral is, then I think that would be good. In addition, wars between the Safavid Empire and the Mughal Empire in India will lead to many forced conversions to Islam from Hindu. Okay. So, and if you wanted to end that with a um, another topic sentence, you could say, these are examples how military conquest led to religious change from 1450 to 1750. All right. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but it wouldn't be bad. Remember, you're under a time constraint. Okay. Okay. So here's the deal. All right. So now let's just say that you're lucky and you came up with two pieces of evidence. So let's go back and look at our, let's go back and write our thesis statement. So you got the, you've got the gunpowder empires, Islamic world wars, and then you've got the Spanish conquest of the Americas. So what you could do, go back and look at this thesis statement. All right. So I like to start with my counter argument. And I haven't shown you my counter argument yet, but I'm just telling you what I like to do. Because Heimler said it's a good idea, and this other dude named John Irish said it's a good idea. So I'm going to start with my counter argument, my non-military conquest causes of religious change. While many religious changes during the time period 1450 to 1750 were the result of missionaries, literacy, and trading contacts, comma, that's my counter argument, and I'm going to write about that in a second. Then the orange. I'm going to list the topics that I'm going to talk about. Due to the European conquest of the Americas and the wars of the Ottoman and Safavid empires, comma, and then here's my argument. War and conquest had a significant impact on changing religious practices. Boom. I think, I think that's a good thesis. I'm pretty confident in this. Okay. Now, what if you don't have a counter argument? You at least need to do the blue and the orange. And if your orange is just one piece of evidence, then fine. You just do the best you can and you move on with your life. Okay, I, you know, I got lucky and thought of two. Okay, so, so we skipped the thesis, we wrote our body, and then I can't, then we came back and wrote the thesis statement. It's okay to skip a few lines. Okay. All right. So then, argument one, argument two, and then if you can, write your counter argument. And this is what I have. And I'll admit it's faster for me to type it 
than it is for you to handwrite it. I know, I know my advantages, but I'm just trying to teach you how to do this. So then, as specifically as I could, I talked about all the ways that religions changed that were not caused by military conquest. I talked about the Reformation, and I talked about literacy and the printing press, and then I started just writing about stuff that I knew about. You may not know, but I knew about it, so I wrote about it. Maybe you can come up with something that I didn't think of. These actions facilitated by the printing press and vernacular translations of the Bible. Vernacular means like in Italy, you read it in Italian, okay? Will change people's relationship with the Christian God. Millions in Germany and England will become Protestants. Okay. So I'm I'm going for this complexity point. It may not be worth it. If you run out of time, just, you know, you run out of time. Don't worry about it. Also, in this Christian missionaries traveled the globe spreading their religion without the use of armies. And then I just tried to elaborate as much as I could. Missionaries traveled all over Africa and most famously converted East Africa. I couldn't think of the country Somalia, so I just put East Africa, okay? Because there are Christians in that area. I, I don't even know if it's Somalia or Ethiopia or both. See, I didn't know, so I just said East Africa instead. Missionaries traveled all over the Americas as well, spreading Christianity. Additionally, Islam didn't just spread via conquest, it spread via trading contacts. And then I elaborated on that. And that's it. That's all I got. No conclusion. By now, time will be up and your hand will be cramping and you'll be ready to go and skip the end of the last half of your day, you know, and or hopefully your teachers won't be too hard on you because you will be exhausted. The test is at 8 a.m., okay? And, um, but that's it. That is the long essay question. And you already writ have written your DBQ by this point, okay? All right, I hope that helps.